Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 164 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I'm Tiffany. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and this episode is sponsored by Cynthia Hernandez. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank, Thank you. Today we will be discussing the second half of chapter 24 of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Occlumency. So make sure that you have read the chapter and you're ready to apparate into the details. Before we begin, very important weekly profit news. I hope that your volume is up. Ah! I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, it's your turn to talk. This is officially the last week that Swish and Flick will be on all podcast platforms. So mm-hmm. next week, next episode, we are exclusive to Spotify. October so, 18th. October 18th. We are exclusive to Spotify. What this means again is that our regular chapter episodes are only going to be found on Spotify. If you mm-hmm. are a patron of our podcast, first of all, thank you very much. Super thank you. But <laughs> what that means is that super thank you. Um, the regular episodes and the Felix files are no longer going to be found in the same place. So that means our regular episodes will be found on Spotify and our Felix files will be found on Patreon or through that little RSS feed email that you got as soon as you signed up to be a patron. Um If you are so inclined, if you would like to send us a screenshot of you following us on our show page on Spotify, you can email it to swishflickcast at gmail.com and we will send you a sticker. This is going to go on through October 18th. So just... It's also a sticker we have not had available before, correct? Correct. It's going to be a new sticker um, Mm -hmm. because I know that... Some people have already bought some stickers, so I don't want to send you guys doubles. So we're going to create something new and send it out to everybody. They're going to get sent Mm -hmm. out after everybody has emailed us. So if you've already sent us one, don't fret. I didn't forget about you. We have a little folder in our email that I'm putting all of them into. And all of them are going to get sent out at the same time. And I think it would be prudent of us (laughs) if we put a cap on how long because we're going to have people coming in the f- oh wait no yeah i said october 18th in the future yeah, yeah, yeah. so after so, so we'll accept emails from everybody until october 18th and after that we appreciate you following us but yes in the future this is a little promo thing leading up to this um <laughs> also something fun is not only do we have our own show page on Spotify, but we also have a user profile on Spotify and our swish and flick user profile is going to feature a ton of brand new playlists that we have put together. And if you go to our user profile on Spotify, you can see all of the playlists that we've created. We're going to have a Gryffindor playlist, a Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, Slytherin playlist. We're, um, going to have sad songs with Sarah. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a it, lot of it, Adele. <laughs> that be something that might happen. Um, I'm sorry in advance if I make you sadder, but that's <laughs> the state I like to live in. Um, <laughs> Perpetual sadness. <laughs> I just like sad songs. Like this is going to sound ridiculous. So like the homie like pump up. You know what I mean? Like yeah. to get me feeling. Yeah. Like I a lot it. of Adele songs. Like you jam out to it and then I feel better. Yeah. I'm the same way. I, I like it. those kind of songs. Um, hmm. And then also we can also create playlists of the podcast. So Mm -hmm. we're going to create different playlists um, with different episodes based on based on little like nuances that, you know, like we might do like you might see a Sorcerer Stone playlist where all of the Sorcerer Stone ones are together. But then also on top of that, it could just be like a best hits or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. However, they are all going to be live by the time 
you are listening to this, at least most of them, not all, maybe not all of them, but some at least will be live by the time I mean, you're we're going to be creating them, yes. you know, over time. And it's going to be a gradual thing. So just make sure that you go and follow us on our user mm-hmm. profile too, mm-hmm. so that you can see all the different playlists that we're going to be creating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So go get Spotify. That's where we're going to be from now on. And we are really, really excited yeah. about it. So we hope that you're excited just as with excited. us and for us and yeah. come along on this fun Spotify time. Yeah. And we truly appreciate everyone um, with your like well wishes and congratulations. Yes. Um, it's so nice of you. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for that. We super appreciate yeah. it. I can't believe that this is the last week before we're exclusive, though. It's crazy. Know, it just, like, I came yeah. so fast. It went by fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It did. I'm just so excited. Yeah. I'm excited for the playlist that I haven't at this current time created, but also anxious <laughs> about it because I get too into it. So do I. And, like, I have to also remember, like, it's not that serious, but <laughs> I take it seriously. It's I'm serious. I also Sarah. really want, so if someone, and I talked about this in another episode, I believe, if someone wants to help create a playlist of all the songs that we've talked about yeah, that'd be on so the fun. podcast, I think that'd be hilarious, but I also need help slash someone else do it for me, but just help me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be a hilarious playlist. But yeah. Fun times, guys. Okay. Katie. Yes. It's time for the recap. You're into it today. Oh, my gosh. I threw it back to the OG. (laughs) (laughs) It just felt right. It felt right. You know what would have been funny if I had done the recap because I'm Tiffany. True. Why do I think about these things after the fact? It's always I don't know. Would you like to give it a go, Sarah? No, right. <laughs> I'm, not as, I'm not as good as the no. OG Tiffany. I do have to say uh, before my recap that this episode comes out on my birthday. Oh, it does. Big happy and I also, also she's thirty. She's You're officially 30. in the old people club. Um, I do want to point out the fact that um. Teddy has been all over Katie, <laughs> and I think his tail was just in your armpit, yeah. if I'm correct. <laughs> yeah, it's usually all over me. Ted wanted so to help with we the have recap. The kitty cats are here today. It's the recap. Look at the cats. <laughs> all right. Last half of this chapter. So Christmas break is over, and for the first time ever, Harry really doesn't want to go back to Hogwarts, which is super weird, but that has to tell you just how crummy mm. of a time he's having <laughs> that was last year what get it oh my god had a crummy time last year. <laughs> 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 we knew today was gonna be i miss saying it man i miss saying it um, <laughs> simpler times simpler times <laughs> honestly god serious isn't thrilled everyone's leaving as well um but before harry goes back to school snape pays him a visit at grimald place Harry gets to have private lessons with him. Yay. He's so excited. Yes, he is, sir. for the win. Yes, Mm. (laughs) sir. Uh, But most importantly, Mr. Weasley is cured. Before we go into my summary, does anyone else feel like this chapter was like... 80 years yes that's why it yeah. is split it's no like it's so, so it's like this no, you start out like 2020 we're like yeah uh, so many things happened yeah yeah like if you think of the beginning of the year of 2020 it's like wait that was this year I, yeah that wasn't Constantly. like do you guys want to know something do you remember swishmas that was 2020 lord <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Don't say things like that. <laughs> I was I can't remember oh why gosh. I was like looking up pictures in January because we so had our crazy. Swishmas really late in the season because we were just super busy with work and stuff. So we didn't end up having it until January. And yeah, is I like when look, we got I our a picture and I was like, oh my God, look, life was normal. This is January. Yeah. This was 2020. Oh my gosh. Hey, yeah. So bizarre. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Any hoosies, let's let's talk about this chapter. So school is back in session, but there's no date for the next DA meeting, but there is a hot date set up with Harry and Cho. <laughs> Um, also Harry and Snape have their own meeting of the minds they must work through. Harry isn't great at, you know, not thinking his thoughts, but you know. 
it happens. Harry lets Ron and Hermione in on the things he has realized during his time with Snape. Very mysterious. <laughs> um, Harry just wants to go to bed, but then he's interrupted with Valdi being very, uh, very happy, Super which isn't good. No, it's it's not literally literally that good. When the Dark Lords, uh, oh, the Dark Lords are really excited. happy. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he's been the happiest he's ever been in 14 years. Uh, what could have happened? I don't know. Okay. Next time on Sesame Street. Stop. <laughs> oh That's what I feel like that sounds like. It does. It does. <laughs> but honestly, can I just, before I get started, I have very much like, because it's a Saturday morning, we have coffee and stuff. Like I'm getting the old school swish vibes back when we used to do this like sounds ridiculous old school swish vibes i'm like it's like, like we're not old before, but i guess we are before miss <laughs> rose like we would do this on saturday mornings remember when yeah, we, would we would do like two episodes at one day. time like yeah all day. swish weekends i mean this was a, yeah. an extended swish weekend this, is this the has old, been a swish week we yeah, what was it <laughs> wednesday wednesday thursday friday saturday we're taking tomorrow off i took Monday. sunday out we were gonna do swish <laughs> stuff on sunday and i was like we need a, it's, it's also not going to be cold enough, I don't think. I agree. It's because it's going to be in the 80s. So, But I just, I got that feel. Like, I'm sitting down here and it's like, I just got that vibe. We never recorded here with, oh, we did record here without your child. Like, not without her, but before her. Yeah. She was around, though. She's she, not out. She was hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> she was, hanging she was out. suspended. <laughs> in your stomach. All right. <laughs> Let me... Ooh. Go ahead and zoom in on my text so I can read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Harry spent most of the next day dreading the evening because his potions lesson <laughs> in the morning didn't dispel his trepidation because Snape is still as unpleasant as ever to him, even though they're going to be having these super important um, private lessons together for like... A very important reason. Like, you'd think maybe he was hoping that Snape's mood would change toward him because of this. Hard pass. No, thank you. It's not. I think it's just hard for him to look at James. You know what I mean? I agree. I don't think well, it's right. Well, and Lily's eyes. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't disagree, but it's whatever. But I also, like, they just are not, they're not a good team. Like, if he had someone else teaching him, I really think he would have done better. He might not have, like, mastered it like a Draco Malfoy would have or has. Um, it is what it is. So Harry's <laughs> mood was sunk even lower when the members of the DA kept approaching him about when their next meeting would be. And Harry has to tell a lie. So he tells them that he has to take remedial potions. Quote, I'll let you know when the next one is. Harry said over and over again, but I can't do it tonight. I've got to er, remedial potions. <laughs> you take remedial potions? Asked Zacharias Smith. Superciliously. Nope. Yeah, I said that right. Superciliously. Having cornered Harry in the entrance hall after lunch. <laughs> I'm I was gonna ask the no, same thing. No, he said it superciliously. No, what she's asking it is like that? it's in the book. It's a quote. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm not Wait, done. Can I just talk about the word for a second? Sure. Because Megan and Katie thought that I made that word up. <laughs> You're because whenever I would do Suzanne, ish. I would be like, it's super silious. It's like super with a cape joking around just because I knew that was a word with a lot of like S's. Um, <laughs> and Katie was like, oh, she's like, I just always thought that was like a made up word. I'm like, no, it's a real <laughs> word. It kind of means like, um, like haughtily, like, oh, well, like we know Zachary Smith. Yeah. Um, so this was after lunch, and then he continues to say, Good Lord, you must be terrible. Snape doesn't usually give extra lessons, does he? First of all, rude. Just because someone takes a remedial class or has tutoring of some kind doesn't give you the right to act like a complete toad. And just because someone has a difficulty in one subject doesn't mean they're stupid. Correct. Like, I know, I... I went to study not, sessions all I the time. struggle with English and it's my language. You know what I mean? Like I, that's, I don't do well in that stuff, but like, that doesn't mean I'm not smart. And my secondly was, um, just hush, just simple. Just hush. She's really telling this to me. Shut it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Ron, 
of course, is not at all impressed with Smith. And he asks Harry if he should jinx him, aiming right between the shoulder blades as he walks away. (laughs) And Harry told him, just forget it. And he comes to the conclusion that everyone is just going to think that he's really stupid, which is sad. And then Cho shows up and I'm sure he's feeling really great. And then she's like on the scene. Hi, Harry, said a voice behind him. And he turned around to find Cho standing there. Oh, said Harry, as his stomach leapt uncomfortably. <laughs> hi. Just so you know, without without the author's words in between, he says, oh, hi. <laughs> 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 so awkward. Hermione takes this as a cue to get out. So she takes Ron right above the elbow. I feel like she's mothering him out. You know how moms would like I, take their kids and just like, get out of here. Like he seems a little <laughs> oblivious to the whole thing. So she's yes. got to be like, well, and he wants to watch. Like, I feel like he's very much. In, let me say like, this. He if wants I to was get in Harry tips. or if I was Harry or Cho, <laughs> Megan would be Ron and Katie would be, Ron and be <laughs> yes. like, we need like, come on. <laughs> okay. But hold on. Why on earth does Ron want to get tips from Harry? Harry on this he says because he doesn't know oh, anything both of them hi. don't <laughs> that's not a good tip I think it's one does of those things does this work like, <laughs> oh hi you, you, you gotta watch the situation oh, to to see what's gonna happen oh hi <laughs> oh my gosh oh so Hermione says we'll be in the library and then she takes off towards the marble staircase with Ron like I said she had his arm right above the elbow <laughs> Again, Megan and Katie. Correct. <laughs> so Cho asks if he had a good Christmas, and he was like, yeah, no, it wasn't bad. And then, you know, she said that hers was quiet, yada, yada, yada. And she's looking embarrassed. But then she brings up that there's a trip to Hogsmeade planned for next month. So she's, like, super nervous as well. Can I, I just want to say props to her. That's hard to do. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And it's next month. It's on Valentine's Day. Ooh. Catch a hint, Mr. Potter, right? That's like the worst time for a first date, in my opinion, but go on. Uh, it's a lot of pressure, I would say. I would agree. And so, you know, Harry doesn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> right, said Harry, wondering why she was telling him this. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> well, I suppose you want to. Only if you do, she said eagerly. <laughs> and Harry stared. He had been about to say, I suppose you want to know when the next DA meeting is. <laughs> But her response didn't seem to fit. (laughs) He's so (laughs) dumb. I love him so much. Like, I love him so much. So Harry's not picking up what she's putting down. So Cho is mortified. And she's like, okay, you don't want to. I'll see you around. And she walks away. And Harry is standing there, wheels turning. And then he finally gets it. So he has to, like, stare at her walking away before it, like, clicks in his head. And he's like, Joe, hey, Joe. And he runs after her, catches her halfway up the marble staircase. And he goes, once again, er, er, do you want to come into Hogsmeade with me on Valentine's Day? And so she finally is like, thank you. Ooh, yes, she says, blushing crimson and beaming at him. And the next part's really cute. Right. Well, that's settled then, said Harry, feeling that the day was not going to be a complete loss after all. He headed off to the library to pick up Ron and Hermione before their afternoon lessons, walking in a rather bouncy way himself. Truly, props to Cho. It's so cute. Because it's hard to do. And also, a lot of times, girls don't aren't the ones that do that. So, like, that's awesome. If you want to ask someone out, do it. But I did. scary. And then I got married. I mean... I did, did, didn't. I, you know, I at least told someone I liked them. I, That's also difficult to do. I went like around a lot of barriers to try to find Maddie's phone number and AIM name. <laughs> His AIM handle. <laughs> and I finally I found like it. I you call it AIM because it's A-I-M. We call it AIM. Yeah, I called it AIM we as should. well. Oh no, because it was like what, like an, not an is it an acronym? Is that what the word is? What? AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah, yeah. So it was A I M. We called it AIM. No, cool, Sarah. <laughs> but that's you know, I went after him and I was like, "Yo, let's hang out." All right, so now back to Hogwarts. It is six p.m. and the glow of successfully asking Cho out is quickly fading because lessons with Snape are soon. And he had an ominous feeling that intensified with every step that he took to Snape's office. 
He paused outside the door, wishing he was anywhere else in the world, took a deep breath and knocked and entered. Quote, it was a shadowy room lined with shelves bearing hundreds of glass jars in which floated slimy bits of animals and plants suspended in variously colored potions. In a corner stood the cupboard of full of ingredients that Snape had once accused Harry, not without reason, mm -hmm. of robbing. Harry's attention was drawn towards the desk, however, where a shallow stone basin engraved with runes and symbols lay in a pool of candlelight. Harry recognized it at once. Dumbledore's pensive. Wondering what, what on earth it was doing here, he jumped when Snape's cold voice came out of the corner. And so I pulled up um, on the wiki Snape's office, and they have, like, a little picture on here. I'm going to pull it up. And if you didn't know, this office is used by Severus Snape during <laughs> <laughs> like, the amount of time that he spent as Potion's Master. <laughs> Oh, um, it's described as sh a shadowy and miserable office in the Hogwarts dungeons. Oh, it'd be funny if you're just like, it's described as an office. It's an office. <laughs> there are office type things in oh. here. Um, so yeah, it's like full of different like ingredients and for potions and things like that. <laughs> um, and yeah, so there's a little bit of a history behind Snape's office. When uh, Harry and Ron flew, good night. When Harry and Ron right, flew they the flew Ford Anglia to to Hogwarts, um, you know this is where they were. And then McGonagall is like, "You want some sandwiches?" And that's that's where this all happened. <laughs> Hermione, this was in 1992. Hermione also stole bicorn horn and boomslang skin from his office for the polyjuice potion. In 1994, Snape caught Harry and after Draco had seen him in Hogsmeade. And so they were taken to Snape's office. In 1995, Barty Crouch Jr. disguised as Judy. Just kidding, Moody, but also we call Judy. Stole ingredients for Polyjuice Potion from this office. And, you know, same year, Dobby stole some gillyweed. If you forgot about that, it was Dobby. It was Dobby. Dobby. This is also where Barty um, confessed <laughs> under the influence of Veritaserum. Barty Crouch. Junior. <laughs> also, we were watching the Great British Bake Off the other day, and they were making busts of their heroes. And the one lady said, the first time I made this, it looked like Dobby. And I had to, <laughs> had to say that because she mentioned Dobby. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. Uh. Um, we're about to talk about what else happened in 1996 with memories and such. So I'm not going to get into that because we're going to talk about it Don't at length. take my part. It, All of I will not. Moonlight. In 1997, on the night of the Battle of the Astronomy Tower, Luna Lovegood and Hermione Granger kept watch in front of Snape's office <sighs> until Flitwick sprinted down the passageway and into the room. Snape actually stunned Flitwick and told Luna and Hermione to look after him as he disappeared on his role. You know what I mean? Playing his part. So, and then when Snape was promoted to headmaster, he peaced out. Bye. And took, took Bye. Dumbledore's old office. Yes. So that is Snape's lovely office and um i know that we're going to talk about uh the lesson that's coming up right now but the the pensive is there i assume for snape to remove memories from maybe his double agency as well as with lily mm. yeah doesn't he do that later on i'm gonna talk about I mean, it oh no <laughs> <laughs> but like, yes. So I think it's like a precautionary thing because I don't. He's not expecting Harry to to be able to break into his mind. You know what I mean? He's just gonna knock. But Harry he's did. Say, hey, what up? But Harry up, was mind? able up, to Brie? like. I know. I'm saying he's not expecting it, but I think this was a precaution at this point. Yeah. Um, because he has heard yeah. how Harry was good at fighting off the Imperius curse, so maybe he's just putting himself on his guard. Like I don't yeah. know what this kid's gonna do. I think that like he's not. He's I have gonna be one of those about the pensive, but P okay. The what the pensive? Pensive. He's gonna be one of those people that like deep down knows that Harry has 
certain skills, even though when he speaks about him, especially like to Dumbledore, he says, you know, he's like mediocre or something like this. And it's just something that he doesn't want to admit out loud. But I think deep down he knows that like Harry has some some special abilities. He's got skills. They're multiplying. <laughs> Fozzie Bear's here. What up, pooch? Hi. Hey. I love your stinky fish. All right, Megan, you can start. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So Harry comes into the office and Snape tells Harry to shut the door behind him. And as Harry does this, he just has this horrible feeling that he's imprisoning himself in this office with Snape, which I don't blame him. Yeah. Um, so Snape is Snape as the lesson starts, basically. He's all like, you must call me sir or professor at all times, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And Harry is just kind of like, mm-hmm, okay, whatever, dude. And I said, are we in for sassy <laughs> Harry? Oh, yeah. I hope so. Um, so then Snape says, now, occlumency, <laughs> as I told you back in your dear godfather's kitchen, this branch of magic seals the mind against magical intrusion and influence. Um, but honestly, Harry really isn't concerned with what the heck occlumency is. He just really wants to know why the heck he needs it. Um, so Snape goes on, surely even you could have worked that out by now, Potter. The Dark Lord is highly skilled at legilimency. What's that, sir? <laughs> <laughs> and he says it's the ability to extract feelings and memories from another person's mind. So at this point, Harry is kind of scared. Um, and I feel bad for him that the person he has in this moment to discuss this with is Snape. Because Harry genuinely has a lot of feels about this situation and the person he can discuss it with is the person who really doesn't care about his feelings. Um, yeah. And he really is like, he really is scared about it. So he says, he says something along the lines of like, oh, so it's like mind reading. And Snape is like, you don't understand fine distinctions. It's one of the shortcomings that makes you such a lamentable potion maker. Which, first of all, maybe. But second, <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about maybe. we're not talking about potions right now. And just answer his dang question. But anyway. So then Snape continues to go on and explain that only muggles talk of mind reading. And Harry's like, in his mind. Well, actually, I'm kind of speaking for Harry. I feel like in his mind, Harry's like, mm, oh. <laughs> OK, sir, I lived with muggles for 11 years and had no idea that the wizarding world existed. So maybe cut me some slack, yo. But, you know, Snape, don't do that. Nope. Um, so Snape continues. The mind is not a book to be opened at will and examined at leisure. Thoughts are not etched on the inside of skulls to be perused by any invader. The mind is a complex and many layered thing, Potter, or at least most minds are. He's such a <laughs> jerk. <laughs> it is true, however, that those who have mastered legitimacy are able under certain conditions to delve into the minds of their victims and to interpret their findings correctly. The Dark Lord, for instance, almost always knows when somebody is lying to him. Bingo. Only those. S what? bingo almost oh, yeah. always almost he's always. like not when i lie though. and he said yeah, i was gonna say <laughs> he says that because he mm -hmm. successfully lies to voldemort all the time does draco successfully lie because we know that he's skilled in these things too ain't he he is I don't know. <laughs> ain't he? Ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's got that mind black girl yeah um <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying I don't, I don't know if he has the uh, oh well i guess he does in deathly hollows because he doesn't admit well, I guess he's not lying to Voldemort. I was going to say he's he doesn't not lying to Voldemort that's Harry yeah. at first. Yeah. I don't know. But maybe he is able to lie to Voldemort and say, I genuinely didn't think it was him or something, you know? And that's why he still yeah. lives because if Voldemort, I mean, we don't really know what happened right. to Malfoy, you know, younger Malfoy. Well, we really don't know what happened to Lucius as well. We just know that he looks beat to heck yeah. when we see well, him he's in the Shrieking Shack. Was. I know, but I, it feel I feel like nothing happened to to Draco that much. You know what so I mean? So maybe At that means though that he is able to lie to him. It could be. Um, 
So then Snape continues, only those skilled at occlumency are able to shut down those feelings and memories that contradict the lie and so utter falsehoods in his presence without detection. Um, so that sounded a lot like mind reading to Harry. And he's like, OK, whatever. You're just trying to, like, make me feel stupid by not saying that it's mind reading. But it really is. Right. Um, so he asked Snape if that meant that Voldemort could know what they're thinking now. Um, and Harry, I, like at, in this moment, like Harry's getting kind of, especially for being in a room stuck with Snape, he's getting pretty excited because he feels as if he's finally getting some answers. Um, cause yeah. he's felt so in the dark, like this entire school year when it comes to anything Voldemort related. Um, so Snape then explains that because of how far away Voldemort is and the fact that Hogwarts grounds are guarded by so many different ancient spells and charms to ensure that everybody who's inside it is and it states bodily and mentally safe it would be difficult for Voldemort to break into Harry's mind eye contact is usually essential mm. to legitimacy mm. but that confuses Harry because he's yeah. like hold on <laughs> I was literally in my dorm when this just happened what's he talking about Voldemort doesn't have eye contact on me so you don't know <laughs> but, that, call in and watch <laughs> the <laughs> but that well then because one Harry's would call like, him on. a peeping tom oh, oh! <laughs> You're episode title <laughs> um so Harry's kind of like, well, hold on. Why do I need to learn this then? Because Voldemort's not going to have eye contact with me. Or is there something else going on here? Because I was in my dorm when this happened. So Snape then explains again that like the normal rules don't seem to be applying to him, uh, which is kind of why Dumbledore wants this. So he says the usual it's rules the effect. do not seem to apply with you, Potter. The curse that failed to kill you. I, the way that he words this just kills me because oh like God. he clearly just wishes Harry could have died so that he could have Lily in his life. But anyway, oh. <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. Um, the curse that failed to kill you seems to have forged some kind of connection between you and the Dark Lord. The evidence suggests that at times when your mind is most relaxed and vulnerable, when you are asleep, for instance, you are sharing the Dark Lord's thoughts and emotions. The headmaster thinks it inadvisable for this to continue. He wishes me to teach you how to close your mind to the Dark Lord. But Harry's still confused. Why would Dumbledore want this to stop when it's been useful? Like, would Mr. Weasley be alive if he didn't have this connection? And Harry's thinking in his mind, he's like, I mean, I don't like the connection, but it has been used for some good. Mm. Um. Mm -hmm. However, then Snape continues and says it appears that the Dark Lord has been unaware of the connection between you and himself until very recently. So up till now, it seems that you've been experiencing his emotions and sharing his thoughts without his being any the wiser. However, the vision you had shortly before Christmas represented such a powerful incursion upon the Dark Lord's thoughts and during this whole thing, Harry just keeps interrupting Snape like over and over again. And Snape is getting mad um, to the point where like Snape kind of like stops going on and is just like, first of all, stop interrupting me. Second of all, <laughs> stop saying Voldemort. And third of all, I hate you. So Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Things are being said. <laughs> Uh, but Harry really doesn't care because, like I said before, he feels like they're finally getting to the bottom of this business and he just wants answers. He doesn't care about the fact that he's making Snape angry. Let's so, get down to business to defeat <laughs> Voldemort. <laughs> Uh, so Harry asks a very valid question, but makes the mistake of saying Voldemort and it makes Snape even more angry. So it's now confirmed basically that the snake was currently being possessed by Voldemort. And that's why Harry saw through the snake's eyes. But it seems as though Voldemort realized that he was there and now believes that it can work in reverse. So now that he's worker, aware worker, of it, worker. he's basically going to try to control Harry at some point, but they don't know when and they don't know how. So this is why he needs to take occlumency. Mm -hmm. um, 
Snape says the important Facts. point is the Dark Lord's now aware that you are gaining access to his thoughts and feelings. He's also deduced that the process is likely to work in reverse. That is to say he's realized that he might be able to access your thoughts and feelings in return. Um, so I, I think that probably during this book, Voldemort did try to legitimately access Harry's thoughts and feelings, but I don't think he's ever really successful in that regard, which is why he then manipulates his own memory for Harry to see. And that's how he ends up getting him later in the book. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, because I don't remember anything, but I'm excited. Well, serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, I bet you Voldemort tries to actually break into Harry's mind so he can read it. But I don't think he's successful in reading Harry's mind and he, that frustrates him. So he feels the only way now to get to him since Harry can so easily enter his thoughts, he's going to manipulate his thoughts for Harry to read. And that's so how he here's then, my like, question. Got it, got it. I'm, I'm not saying that you're not correct at all. This is, I have really have a question uh -huh. about, yeah, go on. <laughs> No, I'm not even <laughs> going to be talking about kidding. him breaking into Harry's mind. But when he when he thinks when he creates the fake uh, current time vision of torturing Sirius at the ministry, how how like how does he s essentially like send that to Harry? Because it's fake. Because like a lot of the times, like for instance, when we know that. Voldemort has a specific feeling that's powerful, whether it's, you know, anger or, or joy, Harry feels that and can sometimes like see those things. So like, how does that work since it's not since he, he, isn't, he doesn't know necessarily when Harry's going to be in his mind? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. I wonder if like, like, I guess I can't I think really he remember Harry's mind. Well, no, but I feel like he tried and like that didn't work, which is why he then manipulated his own is what I'm I mean, saying. We but can I, always I look think it it's but I like he, he literally is like taking a test, isn't it? Uh, like they usher him out. Oh, he's yeah, like, I'm he's fine, not I'm fine. Sleeping. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder it. Well, he didn't he fall asleep, though? He was taking a test and he like dozed off because he was getting bored or something, didn't he? So he was. I'm going to look. I'm going to look. His mind literally is just reading but it. I, but I wonder if um, Voldemort can f like because he's now aware of the connection he could feel that harry had entered his mind and he's like now's the time i'm going to think of this because yeah, he maybe. knew harry was there so he so in the owls chapter i think chapter 31 uh that's what i'm on here yeah. this is what the book says harry closed his eyes and buried his face in his hands so that the glowing red eyelid the gro glowing red of his eyelids because it was um He's, they're all taking their tests. Quills are scratching on parchment. It's hot in the back of his head, whatever else. Is this history of magic test? Um, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, because we're talking and, about um, fall asleep Bonacord. Hey, too. we talked about Bonacord. I mean, like, that's just so, like, blatantly, like, I'm just going to, like, curl up in my desk, like, fall asleep. <laughs> I would never be able to do that. <laughs> I don't care. Um, Benz doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, because it's like Bonacord Heck wanted no. to stop troll hunting and give the trolls rights, but Lichtenstein was having troubles with a tribe of particularly vicious mountain trolls. That was it. And he's like, he opened his eyes. They stung and watered at the sight of the blazing white parchment. Slowly, he wrote two lines about trolls, then read through what he had done so far. It did not seem very inform informative or detailed, yet he was sure Hermione's notes on the Confederation had done gone on for pages and pages. And then he closed his eyes again, so he's like trying to remember... So do you think that maybe he does? Is this a, his way of breaking into Harry's mind? He's not like seeing what he's seeing as if he was possessing him, but he's putting a false vision yeah. in his well, mind. Is, it keeps going. So he's like trying to think about like what he'd written and talking about Lichtenstein and whatever. And he's like, think he told himself his face in his hands while all around him quills scratched out, never ending answers. And the sand trickled through the hourglass at the front. And then it's dot, 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 dot. And it's, he was walking along the cool, dark corridor to the department of mysteries again. So it literally went for him, like still in class. Like I think he put his head down and then he's having that vision, but it was almost like he was in that. So do you kind think of, that like, he planted that there? Out. And it was just because, like, he's actively trying to get into Harry's mind. And it just so happens that Harry, like, falls asleep. And so his mind is more relaxed yeah, yeah, and vulnerable. He's, yeah. he's not 
I think because he's not fully asleep, but it's like almost at that cusp of like, I, you know, when you're like, yeah, I'm sure it this has happened to vulnerable. everybody when you're like in class and you're like struggling to keep your eyes open kind of yeah. thing. Like so what if he's just like actively working at this like all the time or this is the day that he started to like do that and it's just like just happened to happen because then. Harry's vulnerable now it like worked yeah. it's like picking a lock and finally doing it the right way I don't know thoughts to think someone in the chat I can't find it now Mitch said um maybe Voldemort can sense when Harry's getting more vulnerable yeah that, that I guess that's kind of what maybe. I said before i think like like voldemort's aware of the connection yeah so when harry's asleep or he can sense or... yeah like he can sense this is the time i can do it now yeah to try. yeah yeah um okay shall i move on sure <laughs> so good discussions <laughs> yeah so basically what Snape is saying, like, yes, Voldemort may try to make Harry do things, which now brings them back to Occlumency. Um, and Snape removes a memory from his mind and drops it into the Ponceuve. <laughs> and then he does it two more <laughs> times. And I say, yeah, it's the memories from Deathly Hollows that he ends up giving Harry. And then what Sarah said before, I agree with as well. It's probably a lot of his spy work memories so that Harry, like, doesn't catch on to that. Um, but the first thing I thought of was, oh, his memories with Lily or like a lot of the things that he's going to end up sharing with Harry and Deathly Hollows. I never thought of that stuff until right now, because I, I always just assumed it was like, well, they're just memories he doesn't want Harry to see, which is true. But my yeah. mind didn't go as far as <laughs> what you guys brought up. So that's awesome. Um, I said <laughs> too, like, so I feel as if Harry should have had the opportunity to remove things as well. Hmm. And I wonder if that was partially Dumbledore's intention with offering the pensieve for the lesson. Possible. And Snape Very was possible. just like, well, I'm not going to let him use it. Do you know how to that's I wonder if he, he'd have to teach Harry how to how to do that as well. Probably. But like, I feel like it could be a 10 minute lesson and be like, OK, now if there's anything that you don't want me to see that comes to the forefront of your mind, remove it so that we can go on with this lesson. But I feel as if Snape was just kind of like, mm, I'm going to use it and I'm not going to let Harry use it. And yeah. But um, maybe. I don't know. Uh, can you share a pensive? I would think so because I mean he's sharing it with I don't Dumbledore. Think you, I don't. Th I don't think you can. I would think that you have to take your stuff out for someone else to put their stuff in. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, like doing like, laundry. Like, what happens? Like <laughs> memories. Like if, if Tiffany and I both put our memories in the pot, would they get all mixed up and become like a whole different memory of like me and Tiffany's childhood? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't I I I Or am I thinking way too hard about I it? I really don't know though. I feel like Like are they like, like unless you want to like sh I, I don't know. I feel like it, they should not be shared. I wouldn't want to share mine. Marcus, you got your But I don't you don't, I don't like to share. I don't really like to share. I just feel as if it's rather unfair to allow himself the opportunity to remove memories but not Harry. I don't disagree with you. So, I don't know. Okay. Um, but Snape just explains, he's like real quick. He's like, all right, stand up. You can use your wand to attempt to disarm. He says, attempt to disarm me or defend yourself in any other way you can think of. But he really doesn't offer up anything else except that. And this, in my opinion, is one of the major reasons why Harry fails at occlumency. Dude. He just isn't given the time to explain what's about to happen. Like what exactly Snape, all Snape is like, well, I'm going to try and uh, break into your mind, basically. Like, this is what it is. Think for one second, Remus explaining this. Exactly. Like, he would have walked him through. Yeah. This or is even what McGonagall. you're going to feel. Right. This We're going to go through yes. this. This is how it's going to happen. Are you ready? Are you up yeah. for it? Okay, let's start. You right. know what I mean? Instead also just, should boom. have given him, like, chocolate for after. Well, right? Snape is like, I don't care, care how you feel after. <laughs> your father was a swine. Oh my god, this scene. <laughs> um, You're half pig! <laughs> <laughs> oink, oink! So Snape says he's going to attempt to break into his mind, but also 
Oh, I already said that. Sorry, I jumped through my notes. I said something before. I said Harry should have been given the chance to remove anything. He didn't want Snape seeing just as Snape was able to do that for him. Um, and then Snape goes, are we going to see? We are going to see how well you resist. I have been told that you've already shown aptitude at resisting the imperious curse. You will find that similar powers are needed for this. Brace yourself now. And that is just Bob's shorts. Like, this is not how you teach somebody how to do something that is this intrusive into their mind. This is not like teaching somebody Akio. This is um, like this is uh, it just. Uh, yeah, I could rant for a while. So I'm just going to end here. Yep. <laughs> So Snape hits him with legilimens like before Harry gives him has, no chance. No, he doesn't have a chance to be ready. It's before he even has a chance to like think about how to resist this because again he's been giving no given no instruction. So instantly mm -hmm. he's got like I like how it's described. It's like a vivid flickering film of image after image after image, mm -hmm. so that he can't even see the office anymore. It's like he's in his own brain mm -hmm. watching his own memories as a really fast movie. Um yeah. So he was five, watching Dudley riding a new red bicycle, and his heart was bursting with jealousy. Oh, oh little really? Harry. The, okay, I, can I just say really quick bicycle? that this part in the book, and <sighs> not so much in the movie, because in the movie they focus more so on like current yeah. things in his mind, but in the book it's just like, I like my heart <laughs> like heart. broke for him. Right, because mm -hmm. you see all these things he went yeah. through when he was, you know, we don't know a He's lot five. of. We don't one, see these. Nine. Yeah. 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 Uh, he was nine, and Ripper the Bulldog was chasing him up a tree, and the Dursleys, the Dursleys, I know, all three I of them, say. were laughing oh. below on the lawn. He was sitting under the sorting hat, and it was telling him he would do well in Slytherin. Hermione was laying in... Take that, Snape! <laughs> Hermione was laying in the hospital wing, her face covered with thick black hair. A hundred dementors were closing in on him beside the dark lake. Cho Chang was drawing nearer to him under the mistletoe. So that's when he was like... No, you're not watching that. No, nope. that's private. <laughs> um, and well, also, he's in the room of requirement in that memory, oh, ooh, and he's probably mm -hmm. like on top of the fact it's just embarrassing. Like you know, I don't want him to see me having my. I first don't think kiss he even thought Joe. about that. Yeah, I just think it was like a happy coincidence that it's like, oh, I don't want him to yeah. see that either. You know. Yeah. Good timing. <laughs> um, so Harry finds himself on the floor of the office he had hit his knee on, on snape's desk and snape is rubbing his wrist and harry accidentally hit him with a stinging hex mm. and snape asked him about that like did you mean to hit me with that and harry's like no i'm actually like shocked that snape wasn't trying to like flip that like how dare you attack me it's like almost well, like understanding it's weird i do think that that shows though yeah snape snape's understanding of occlumency and right. legitimacy like which, yes, it's surprising just because it's Snape and Harry, but I right. think that Snape genuinely knows that something like that could happen. No, I know, but, but he like, could have still spun flipped it. it. Yeah. 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 So I will give props to Snape for actually like knowing his craft. Well, I, well, knowing his craft and even, you know, I mean, we could dog on him a lot, but like that little instance is him taking a moment to try to like figure out what exactly is going on with Harry and figuring out Harry's abilities. Truthfully. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sure. I got nothing to add. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all know that Snape, his teaching skills are not bad because guess what? Harry excels from his instructions in the Half-Blood Prince, right? Um, so we know that the delivery true. is what's not great. What's that? He's a knowledgeable. His delivery on right. with his students is not right. great. His bedside manner, as one would say, <laughs> is not great. So Harry's like, mm -hmm. um, could you see everything that I saw? And Snape says that he sees <laughs> flashes of it. And then he like asks, like, who the do who the dog belonged to? It's poor Harry. It's a weird thing for Snape to like call out, I feel, I, you know. Yeah. I think he's just trying to give him like a dig. Maybe. You know? Kind of like, like oh, mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Yeah, I did see. Let me prove it to you. Yeah. I saw this dog. Um So then Snape says, Well, for a first attempt that was not as poor as it might have been. That's some high praise from the potions master. <laughs> <actually> <laughs> Just <is>. saying. <laughs> yeah. Um Harry had managed to stop him, but 
He wasted time and energy shouting. You must remain focused. Repel me with your brain and you would not need to resort to your wand. And Harry's like, I'm trying, but you're not showing me how. I would also be frustrated because if you physically show me something, I'll pick it up real fast. I know that you can't really show someone how to fight with your mind. But again, just a little bit of explanation, <laughs> sir. Well, it just reminds me of like some previous professors and teachers and stuff that I've dealt with where it's like they yell at not I get I mean kind of they like they talk down to you as if like you don't know what you're doing but in my mind I'm like yeah but you haven't taught me how to do better you know so it's like mm. it's just the mark of like a good versus bad teacher in my opinion mm -hmm. like you can't be telling me that I'm not doing good enough when you're not offering any help for me on how to be better right mm -hmm. it's almost like I've had a boss who would always say like I want to teach you you know I'll teach you these things I'll teach you these things but then one never would two if he did it was real fast and not properly explained and three he kind of like expected you to already know something that was never taught to you yeah I don't know it's very frustrating that's also how he teaches Harry mm -hmm. potions though in reality yeah and Neville maybe maybe he thinks like with Harry, like because his mom was pretty good at potions, and he comes from a line of like people yeah. making potions. Like you That's should know true. this. this is true. But again, Harry grew up basically like a muggle. So right. would he? Maybe if he had you been got his mom killed, by Lily, he would have had some of those skills. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Oh my lord, she is on it today. You got his mom killed. Jeez. Oh my God. Well, I mean, uh, you're not wrong. Thank you. Maybe Harry was never. A little kid in his backyard making potions out of dirt and berries and right? stuff because I did that. That's what I would be. I baked cakes like that, well, man. Dirt cake. Everybody gets a slice. I'm sure in Harry's <laughs> mind he thinks your mom didn't have the opportunity to be raised that way either because she was muggle born. So why are you not as good as her? You mean Snape? Yeah, what but say? Harry. his mother had a better childhood yeah. than Harry did. So Well, you're not wrong. I got you. She had loving parents that Lily cared about her and were so excited that you she was right. a witch. Her sister, on the other hand, didn't care about Harry at all. Ah, or being freak. a well, she didn't be a witch, but you know. She's just jealous. She did. She was jelly, wrote to Dumbledore. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he said, nah, not, not me. No, oh not witch. You ain't one. Not allowed. Oh, nay, nay. When's she going to stop? <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> uh, so Snape tells him to no, remember goes. his manners. Uh, and then to close his eyes and Harry throws him a filthy look, but does close his eyes. And he really doesn't like standing in his office with his eyes closed with Snape armed with his wand. There is yeah. zero. I'm going to go negative trust between these two. Like yeah. mm -hmm. you can go mm -hmm. below that. Yeah. They just don't trust each other at all. I mean, he's literally he's not going to actually do anything. I, no, I know. It's just I like, get it. You could cut the tension in the air with a knife here, yeah. just like you could between Sirius and Snape. I think that one's more extreme. Well, cut it but with a spoon. It's bad. <laughs> and like Harry still doesn't. I mean, they they question Snape all the way up until you know Snape. Mm -hmm. Spoiler kills Dumbledore, and even then, obviously, they think he's like on the other side. Well, but they he's... they still question where his loyalties lies. He's like, right. yeah, Dumbledore trusts Snape, but I still really don't. Right? Yeah, it's. I, I'm surprised at like how um like honest he is in this chapter. Cause he's just like, dude, Dumbledore or Voldemort's in your mind. And like he might yeah. see some stuff. And like he's currently far away. Like I'm I'm surprised Harry's not like, well, why do you like where is he? Like, why do you know that exactly? Like blah blah blah. Who said you are um, Snake? I do not say I blah, 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 say. blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> um so Snape tries telling Harry, you know, clear your mind. Let go of all emotion. But Harry's honestly too angry at him. He thinks I could easily as, like just detach my legs then stop being angry at you. Um, <laughs> but Harry tries anyway because he's a freaking champ. So Snape hits him with Legilimens again. So this time a great black dragon was rearing in front of him. His father and mother were waving at him out of an, en out of an enchanted mirror. Cedric Diggory was lying on the ground with blank eyes staring at him. And at that point, Harry yells, no. And he's on his knees again. Um, his brain feels like someone's trying to pull it out of his skull. Um, and Snape has no patience whatsoever. Whatsoever, He yells at him to get up. Uh, he's telling him you're not trying. You're not making any effort. 
like this kid just saw the worst thing he's seen to date. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Um, and Snape says, you're allowing me access to memories you fear, handing me weapons. So Harry stands up. His heart's like pumping in his chest. He feels like he really did once again just see Cedric dead in the graveyard. Um, mm. So Snape looked pale, more pale than normal and angry, but not nearly as angry as Harry. So I don't know. Maybe that threw Snape, too, because he wasn't there. The only person who was there was Harry and yeah. Voldemort. Um, mm-hmm. I think it did affect him because it's not like Snape is choosing yeah. what he's getting to right. see. He hates this. He, yeah, mm-hmm. he doesn't want to see this either. And, ooh, and that was the moment, that graveyard moment, Voldemort coming back, you know, when, when they're in the hospital wing after everything happened in the maze and Harry comes back and Dumbledore says, like, are you ready, you know, to do what you have to do? Yeah. He was so devastated in that moment that he's going to have to go back officially to yeah. do this double life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So seeing that, I'm sure it was just as like Triggering. jarring as Harry yeah. having to see it again. Right. Yeah. Oof. So Harry is probably as mad as he could be at this moment. Through clenched teeth, he's like, I am making an effort. And Snape's like, I told you to empty yourself of emotion. And sassy Harry goes, yeah, well, I'm finding that hard at the moment. <laughs> I mean, rightfully so. Well, again, (laughs) think if this lesson was being taught by somebody like Remus, right? Like at this moment, Mm -hmm. Remus would be consoling Harry and trying to help. Think of how he how he taught Harry about happy memories, Mm -hmm. you know, like Remus, you know, the two of them are literally feeding off of each other and they're both neither one of them want to be there. Neither one of them want to be in that situation anyways that they're in like because of their circumstances they're put in those situations they don't really like each other so like they're feeding off of all that negative energy and it's just building 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 and if you had if he was learning from someone like lupin who just is a more calm calming presence anyways the whole dynamic would be different and i think that harry would be able to clear his mind better Um, right but like who else is better at this than snape so like it's just a lose-lose for both of them yeah it just it sucks um So Snape then says, then you will find yourself easy prey for the Dark Lord. Fools who wear their hearts proudly on their sleeves. I believe he's also making a little James connotation here. Um, Who cannot control their emotions, who wallow in sad memories and allow themselves to be provoked this easily. Weak people, in other words, they stand no chance against his powers. He will penetrate your mind with absurd ease, Potter. I, there's something in that when he says like wallow in sad memories, I think a lot of why Snape is so bitter and resentful is because he has a lot of freaking sad memories. So, like, he needs to take a little bit of his own advice. But also, it ain't easy to just let that go on either end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's sad. So Harry's like, I'm not weak. He's furious. He feels like he might attack Snape at any moment. And Snape's like, well, then prove it. Master yourself. Control your anger discipline your mind (laughs) Uh, and then again without even one second of preparation he just hits him with another legilimens um so this time harry was watching uncle vernon hammering the letterbox shut a hundred dementors were drifting across across the lake in the grounds towards him he was running along a windowless passage with mr weasley they were drawing nearer to the plain black door at the end of the corridor harry expected to go through it but Mr. Weasley led him off to the left down a flight of stone steps and Harry shouts out. So this is like Snape didn't even, he hadn't even got to the point of Harry resisting. He lifted the spell because Harry shouts out, I know, I know. And he's on the floor again and his scar is hurting. Um, So again, from the chapter, what happened then Potter? He asked, eyeing Harry intently. I saw, I remembered Harry panted. I've just realized, realized what? Asked Snape sharply. Harry did not answer at once. He was still savoring the moment of blinding realization as he rubbed his forehead. He had been dreaming about a windowless corridor ending in a locked door for months without once realizing that it was a real place. Now seeing the memory again, he knew that all along he had been dreaming about the corridor down which he had run with Mr. Weasley on the 12th of August as they hurried to the courtrooms in the ministry. It was the corridor leading to the Department of Mysteries, and Mr. Weasley had been there the night that he had been attacked by Voldemort's snake. So Harry, I think this throws Snape for a loop. He's like, what's in the Department of Mysteries? And Harry and Snape is like, 
what did you say? And Harry is actually <laughs> pretty stoked to see that Snape's unnerved. Um, and he's like, I said, what's in the Department of Mysteries, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burr, sir. <laughs> and why, said Snape slowly, would you ask such a thing? Because, said Harry, watching Snape closely for a reaction, that corridor I've just seen, I've been dreaming about it for months. I've just recognized it. It leads to the Department of Mysteries. And I think Voldemort wants something from it. So Snape, of course, yells about saying Voldemort's name. And they glare at each other. Um, so Harry's scar is searing. Snape looks agitated. Um, and when he speaks to Harry again, he like kind of looks like he's trying to brush it off, like he's unconcerned, trying to play it cool. Because obviously Snape knows what's in there. Snape knows Harry's on the right path to figuring out something he shouldn't. So he basically but why just shouldn't he? Huh? <laughs> but uh, why shouldn't he? Yeah. Um I mean it's all about him. Yeah. It's all about him. Mm -hmm. Snape just tries to play it off like, well, there's a lot in the Department of Mysteries. Um, <laughs> few that you would understand <laughs> and none that concerns you. Um, I wonder how much he actually knows is in the Department of Mysteries. You know what I mean? Right. I'm sure he just they just know about the prophecy. but He's like, oh, no one ever told me. <laughs> <laughs> Mom was the last to like, act like he doesn't not know the answer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I don't know a lot of things, Potter. Okay, <laughs> I didn't understand it. do you think unspeakables do like acclimacy and legitimacy and stuff? So they, like, I think they would have to be yeah. an unspeakable, yeah. but don't say that. Get it? Oh, you're cute. You know that. I know. Um. So finally, Snape tells him, "Be back at the same time on Wednesday." And Harry's just like saying like, yeah, sure, fine. Like just agreeing because he just wants out of there. Um, Snape tells him to rid his mind of emotion every night before he falls asleep. How? Ugh. Right. But li but literally how? You can't just tell someone to do something without explaining how it's done or pointing them in a direction to do their own. Like, like how? Because honestly, uh, I would I would like to know for me. Same. He told him. To I would like to turn my brain up. A uh, meditation Sleep app. app. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Harry's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And Snape says, you know, I'll know if you haven't practiced. So Harry grabs his bag. He hurries. Whatever, to dude. Leave. Practice what? Right. <laughs> and he turns back to see Snape scooping his thoughts back out of the pensieve. Pons. Scooping. <laughs> and putting them back in his head. Like with the, his bare hand or like a bear. <laughs> what just happened? I said bear hand and I said it in a way that made me think of like an actual bear, bear hand. hand. Bear claw. Um Ooh, yum. That's a good I like him. Okay, on I'm too. talking I'm talking about new, new girl. girl. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Love him. This is bear claw. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Gad is just one of the best people ever. Mm -hmm. Um Do you think he was scooping it with his bare hands? His own Bare hands. Yeah. Do you think he scooped it with his wand? I'll never not think of bare hands now. No, I'm pretty sure it was bare his wand. Hands. And he's putting it okay. back in his little noggin. Or not like, you know, a uh, litter pooper scooper. <laughs> Doesn't that have like a ladle. holes in it? Yeah, it does. You wouldn't yeah. want any of the memory to fall out. <laughs> like litter. <laughs> he's like wrangling them like noodles. We only want to scoop the poop, you know? <laughs> Um, do we talk about the fact that there's like a lot, I feel like a lot of foreshadowing in this section with like, um, Voldemort, you don't want him like getting in your mind and he does. And then <laughs> saying his name, say my name, say my name. This is what Voldemort's saying in, when in the is seventh one. Cause he's you. like, I'm going to get you. Say my name, say my name. That's great. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> is it my turn? It is. Yeah. Okay. Finally, because I haven't spoken any words this entire <laughs> time. Uh, so Harry and his friends, because he like goes to the library, so they're going to work on homework. Um, he finally sits down and then he sees his reflection in the window. And he's like, oh, he doesn't look good. <laughs> he's very pale. And he notices like, hmm, my scar is really standing out today because I'm real pale. And then Hermione kind of like asks him how his session was, but like didn't really look at him. And then she looks up and she's like, Oh, are you okay? Because he doesn't look good. You look awful. Did, did I tell you guys that? He doesn't look you good. Look Does he look good. good? No. The poor guy. That scar day? Chrissy. <laughs> 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 
Um, and so Harry then kind of tells him like what he realized in Snape's office with the whole like door, whatever thing. Um, and they kind of conclude that the weapon that um, they've been talking about must be in the Department of Mysteries because Harry remembers seeing that door on the day of his hearing. And that's the same door that Arthur was guarding. Um, you know, the word guarding throws me off because it looks like you. it's spelled wrong. Guadin. Yeah. <laughs> Guadin. Um, so then Har- I almost call her Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> First time on a podcast. Her name's Harmony, right? Yep. Hermione then draws the conclusion that it all makes sense. She's like, oh, this totally makes sense because Sturgis Podmore was trying to get through the a uh, door at the ministry. Um, but what doesn't make sense, though, is Podmore was trying to get through a door, but he's on their side. Mm. So let's talk about Sturgis Podmore. Imperial. I would love to. Um, why is he a cartoon? I don't know, but look at the chisel chin. we don't see him chin. in the movie, so that's like... What's that? He's got a butt chin. What's that show um, on... Cart- the old show on Cartoon Network that looks like that guy? Oh, my God. Johnny. Oh, Johnny Bravo. Johnny yeah. Bravo. Dude, he looks yes. like Johnny Bravo he on the wiki. Like <laughs> he looks like someone broke his nose, though. So this is according to the Vikia, the Wikia. Yes. Sturgis <laughs> Podmore was a wizard and a member of the Order of the Phoenix who fought in both the Second and First War. Why did I say it like that? The First and know. Second Wizarding Wars. He was also a member of the Advanced Guard. In 1995, Podmore was put under the Imperious Curse by Death Eaters, who made him attempt to break into the Department of Mysteries. He was sentenced to six months in A.S. Caban for attempting uh, to break in. So he was born at some point between September 8th, 1965, except it says 1956. You're going to be fine. <laughs> and September 7th. So we've just missed your birthday. So happy belated birthday. Happy belated birthday, um, 19, or September 7th, 1957. So according, eventually acquiring a wand and becoming trained in the magical arts. Um, <laughs> Thanks. We got beat so up. Let's see. So we know that he was part of the advance guard that brought Harry from Privet Drive to Grimmauld Place. Um, and on August 12th, 1995, which was the day of Harry's disciplinary Harry. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was the day of the disciplinary Harry. <laughs> what is literally wrong with I don't. Me? You're <laughs> trying to read too fast. I'm trying to do a lot of things. I think you should just slow down a smidge. This is what I would tell my students. <sighs> slow down and just read what's there. In- incidentally. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the day of Harry Potter's disciplinary <laughs> Harry. What? It's 11-11. Make a wish. I wish that I, Sarah could speak. Uh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Literally did not even do that second time on purpose. I love you. Um, disciplinary hearing. hearing. <laughs> Why was it? Hard? I don't know. If you need help, just let me. I'm know. the charge of magic in the presence of a muggle, which is stupid because the muggle is his cousin. His cousin knows that magic exists, but Boom. whatever. Roasted. That's like literally, like, literally, it's just part of it. That's just stupid. Anyways, <laughs> Sergius Palmore was on the order. What was on order of the Phoenix duty standing guard beside the entrance to the department of mysteries. <laughs> I'm really struggling to prevent death theaters from stealing the weapon, AKA the prophecy. Lucius Malfoy was at the ministry that day and he put Podmore under the imperious curse. I don't remember that to be honest with you. We get to that though. Um, Let's see. So still under the influence of Malfoy's imperious curse, Podmore was back on guard duty. Oh, I guess that makes sense because he was down there at the ministry on the August 31st, 1995. Under the control of death theaters, Podmore broke into the Department of Mysteries, a highly classified area, and attempted to steal the prophecy. However, he was discovered during the attempt and was arrested by none other than our favorite guy. Eric Munch. Eric Munch. We haven't talked about Eric Munch in a long time. Mm-mm. I love you. We're bringing it back. Munch. So Eric Munch, he just is a great guy. Loves Bunch of Crunch. Um, he's a ministry watch wizard. <laughs> and he was, he being Podmore, was sentenced to six months in Azkaban after refusing to speak in his defense. Um, and then Mad Eye was irritated when Podmore did not return his invisibility cloak and they did not turn up to help transport Harry safely to King's Cross Station. But they, he didn't know at that time that Sturgis had been imperious and by that time arrested. Um, and then he was released from Azkaban in March of 1996 and he rejoined the order. Um, 
and then I just because I think this is funny, his physical appearance. Sturgis was a wizard with a square jaw and thick straw colored hair. Mm. These features gave the impression that his head was thatched. And if you don't know what that is, it's like if you ever seen um, like like roofs, like the, me saying it's a thatched roof. But no, if you don't know what thatched is, <laughs> anybody know Thatcher Joe? He used to do that. He's a YouTuber. Um, and then let's talk about. <laughs> Department of Mysteries. It's so mysterious. Can't wait. Also from the Wikia. Um, so the Department of Mysteries was a section of the Ministry of Magic that carried out confidential research. So we can't talk it about it. It carried out it's a secret. mysteries. <laughs> Most of its operations were carried out in total secrecy. Um, few wizards within the ministry actually knew what was located within this department. Various mysteries of the world were studied there, including love, space, thought, time, death, and others. Um, this sounded real interesting, to be honest. Wizards who wor have worked in the Department of Mysteries were known as unspeakables because of the confidential nature of their work. Some of the covert research projects that the, this department undertook were revealed to Dumbledore's army, and an important battle of the Second Wizarding War took place within the department in 1996. We're going to see that at the end of the book. It's also real sad. Um, due to the highly co uh, classified nature of this department, it was granted a great deal of independence, being the only one. Oh, wow. <laughs> you're all right. Just being the fine. only one within the entire Ooh. ministry that did not need to answer to the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. That also kind of sounds like risky, you know, like you should answer to someone. Whatever. What do I know? People just going rogue everywhere. Um, even the Minister of, for Magic had very little authority over the department's operations as the 15th minister's attempt to shut down the branch was ignored by the unspeakables. Um, can you imagine, like, Fudge trying to, like, get in charge of them? Jokes. <laughs> Jokes. Jokes. I like Jokes. <laughs> um, so the Department of Mystery lay on the second lowest level of the Ministry of Magic, level nine. It was level accessible via the nine. lifts from the Ministry Atrium. This level bore a striking difference to those above. The black tiled walls were bare with no windows and no doors. Sounds scary. Apart from a plain black one at the end of the corridor that led into the department proper, light was provided only by torches which glowed with a blue white light. A small flight of steps to the left led to level 10 behind the black door was the entrance chamber which was designed to disorient any unauthorized personnel who entered it it was a circular room with a dark marble floor that looked almost like standing water Ooh, that's kind of cool candles admitted a cool blue light cool that's right <laughs> blue peeps are cool i'm blue dabu dee dabu die um, and 12 handleless doors whenever a door closed the walls rotated making it impossible to determine which door was which this chamber would respond to a verbal request for an exit by the opening of the correct door um there's like a lot of history we don't need to go into it because we're also going to talk about it later this would be a cool felix files let's talk about uh that would be awesome place. okay so uh ooh, there's a love chamber they got chambers ooh. so they got We'll just read this. There's divisions. There's the brain room, which we all have our own brain room. It's called your head. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not that funny, but it, I crack myself She's up. She's just in a mood, you guys. <laughs> There's the hall of prophecy. I wonder what's going to happen there. Who said what? Um, There's the death chamber, which just sounds scary. Um, And, you know, we know who what happens there. Unfortunately, because there's like the arch the and the veil. Chamber. Um, there's the love chamber, and it says this room was behind a door that remained locked at all times and could not be unlocked by Alohomora or magical unlocking pen knives. And for good reason. Yeah. I'm glad that they've locked Alohomora. <laughs> right? <laughs> It says, according to Dumbledore, behind the door was the most mysterious subject of the study of the department and most powerful force ever to exist in the universe, which is also known as love, which is like really cool. Um, it could also be used in attempts to understand and duplicate the magical protection of self-sacrificing love, sa self -sacrificing love created the only magical st magic strong enough to repel the killing curse. Um, ooh, there was said to be a large fountain of amortensia in the room. There's the mm. space chamber. Um, I heard it's big. Get it? There's the time room. Heard it flies there. Um, 
some known employees, Lavina Monk Stanley, Broderick Bod, Bodrick Bode. Is that how you would say it? Bodrick Bode. Bode. Sure. Um, Saul Croker. He's the guy that dies, right? Augustus. Broderick Bode. Who? Yes. Yes, he is deceased. Coming up. Augustus. Uh, Augustus Gloop. I wanted to say Augustus Gloop. Augustus, Gloop. <laughs> Augustus Rookford. Um, there's an unidentified intern. Um, and then there's the keeper of the Hall of Prophecies. These are, you know, cool things. Anyways, we're going to talk more about that at a later date and time. Yes. Mm, sorry to be so uh, mysterious about it. Um, and then I also, like, clicked on the wiki about unspeakables because, like, I didn't really remember too much about them. So I'm like, let's read about it. Um, <laughs> so an unspeakable was a wizard or witch who worked in the Ministry of Magic's Department of Mysteries. Little is known about their workplace and even less about their jobs. Employees of the Department of Mysteries were forbidden like Harry Potter's forbidden from ever playing Quidditch again. <laughs> They're forbidden from discussing their jobs or disclosing any information about their department. Hence the name unspeakable. Um, and it says very little is known about what they actually did due to the high level of secrecy surrounding the Department of Mysteries. Some studied love in the love chamber, which, according to um, Elvis Dumbledore, was kept locked at all times or in the time in the time chamber time chamber. I don't know. I'm saying it like that. Sorry. Where the Mysteries stock of time turners was stored prior to being destroyed during the battle of the Department of Mysteries. Um, oh, time really was flying one. there. Others were exploring the nature of thought in the thought chamber or death in the death chamber where Sirius Black was killed by his own cousin because she's not kind. Um, there was a veil in the death chamber that acted as a one way doorway separating the land of the living and the land of the dead. Um, I was going to say the land from the living and I was like, that's not correct. The land Any the living lost. being who went near it would hear voices of his or her dead loved ones. Oof. And any mm -hmm. living being who tried to cross it would then suffer instant death. The um, autonomous nature of the department of mysteries granted the unspeakables a great deal of impunity as they were the only division that did not need to answer to the department of magical law enforcement. Doesn't sound great. Bogus. Yeah. Um, they were even known to ignore the Minister for Magic's interventions as they did when Minister, that's spelled wrong, I think. I yeah. think it is also. Rodolphus Lestrange attempted to shut down the department. Shut it down. Shut and they said, down. not today. <laughs> um, what is that phrase? See. Not today, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's also in um, Game of Thrones because like, what do we say to the God of Death or whatever? And she's like, not today. Um, I told, I say that to Alana sometimes. Like, what do we say to this? She's like, not today. And I try to do something with her that like she needed to do. And she goes, uh, not today. And turned around. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she's fun. Uh, so um, as the title suggests, the key limitation of Unspeakables was that they were not permitted to talk about their work. It is known that due to the dangers of tampering with the laws of time, a series of strict laws and penalties were placed around those studying time-related magic. As such, it can be assumed that they that there were likewise likewise there were laws and penalties in place for unspeakable studying other areas in the department. Um, unspeakables were also unable to remove prophecies from the Hall of Prophecy or even take them off their shelves, as prophecies could only be removed by those whom they were made. Um, anyone else could, who attempted to do so would be struck by the defensive spells placed around placed on the prophecies resulting in significant mental harm. The damage seemed reversible in time, judging by Broderick Bode and unspeakable who was imperious into attempting to retrieve the prophecy regarding Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort, Megan. Um, Jenny in the discord chat brought up and I know that you asked this as a lightning bolt question, but it's like relevant. So I'm just going to bring it up now. But she said, do you think that the Order of the Phoenix was inspired by Bletchley Park, which are like the top secret code breakers from World War Two? And I mm -hmm. really liked that comparison. Yeah, I could totally see that. That's, That's really cool. cool. It's really cool. I'm going to bring it up so we can talk about it a little bit more later. But I okay. there's like, okay. oh, it's like an attraction. In the UK now, um, at this point. Well, whatever. Hmm. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> What's his face? They made a movie, right? Was that the one with... Um, who's the guy with all those names? <laughs> Albus with all those names. No. Percival Bryce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Hold on, I gotta think. Yes, Benedict Cumberbatch. Thank you. I mean, he's got two names. I don't know why I think he had three. But like, <laughs> do you ever just call him like no one? I've never anyone like I, I would really say his everyone name. Always so, is no. his full name. You know what I mean? It's Benedict Cumberbatch. It's Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, That's what Chrissy <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in 1995, Lucius Malfoy noted that Bode showed unusual resistance to the Imperius curse, which Augustus Rookford suggested may have been because the unspeakable knew what would happen if he touched one of the prophecies. Um, once an unspeakable himself, Rookford was convinced, uh, nope, convicted of passing secret information to Lord Voldemort and was thus condemned to Azkaban for life. For life, um, where he was one of the top security prisoners, despite the high degree of independence from the Department of Mysteries that they received when Voldemort conquered the entire ministry, the Unspeakables came to produce falsified research results regarding how Muggleborns were usurping magic from real wizards being corrupted or threatened by the Death Eaters. Doesn't that sound? That happens in real life, where you just are spewing lies and people believe you. Um, so the department, um, is mysterious. It is. And Ron thinks it's like a weird place to put a weapon. He's like, that seems like an odd place to have something. But Hermione disagrees because she's sure that it is something top secret that the ministry is working on. So it's like the best place for that to be. Um, which she's wrong so she thinks about that what it is. The, I was going to say, so she thinks that the weapon is something the ministry is making. Correct. Hmm. Correct. Which Everybody is, knows well, that you shouldn't trust the government. Well, she, <laughs> she's probably drawing from the fact that like this whole year the ministry is infiltrating at Hogwarts, so like some oh, going on yeah. behind the scenes. So I can see where she would pull that from. Yeah, that's true. Well, and I think part of it too is that like she might still want to believe the best in the government, being like, "There's no way that that they truly." Um, aren't trying to fight Voldemort in some way where she doesn't want to believe what they're showing her that they are ignoring it. Um, yeah. So she's trying to think the best in them where it's like not a thing, you know? So she then asks Harry if he is sure that he's all right. Cause he just doesn't, you know, look good. Um, but he's like, no, it's just, I don't really care for like acclimacy, whatever. And she says like, okay, like, let's just go back to the common room. We can all be more comfortable there. Um, so they like pack up and leave. And then when they get there, Fred and George are showing their like newest thing that they have. And it's like a hat that makes the wearer's head invisible. And Hermione's actually pretty impressed. Like she's not even like looking at her homework. She's kind of just watching them and she's super impressed. And so this is, um, cause it's very clever magic. And then this is like her quote from the book. She goes, how do those hats work then? I mean, obviously it's some kind of invisibility spell, but it's rather clever to have extended the feel of invisibility beyond the boundaries of the charmed object. I'd imagine the charm wouldn't have a very long life though. Um, which is like interesting that, yeah, that like, you know, it just proves that like shelf life's kind of, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like that it, you kind of are reminded that like, as much as like Fred and George aren't the conventional student, they're very we're bright so smart. to be able to do these things. So like with Hermione, she's very much the conventional student where she's going to study hard. She's going to get good grades and go on. We're like these two, love to joke and have fun and laugh or, and do that. And like, they obviously are passing their classes, but like, they aren't dumb. You know what I mean? Like they might not be your conventional, like I'm going to study and get good grades, but they're smart peeps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smart peeps. So then Harry tells them that he's like, he can't focus on his schoolwork. So he's just going to go to bed because he's not feeling good. And he'll just finish his homework later. And then Hermione's like, Oh, we'll put it in your homework planner. So you remember, <laughs> So he, he like pulls it out of his bag and him and Ron kind of like share like basically like an eye roll. So he opens up the planner and it says, don't leave it till later, you big second raider. <laughs> um, so he like writes it in this thing and then he like leaves to go to bed. Um, but I wanted to read. Yeah, Megan. I just wanted really quick to go back to the Fred and George thing because Marcus in the chat says, depending on the power or competency mm. of the wizard, it could depend. It could determine the lifespan or quality of the charm. And I liked that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um possible comparison Ooh, it's kind of sad though because like if you think about it if if fred was doing some of the charm work mm -hmm. ooh, let's move on that's sad but i also think that they're very powerful and skilled wizards um so they're they're that's why i think that's part of why they're very successful is because they're good at what they do yeah <clears throat> 
I'm going to read from the book. <laughs> he was feeling sick again, just as he had the night that he had had the vision of the snake, but thought that if he could just lie down for a while, he would be all right. He opened the door of his dormitory and was one step inside it when he experienced pain so severe he thought that someone must have sliced into the top of his head. He did not know where he was, whether he was standing or lying down. He did not even know his own name. Manical laughter was ringing in his ears. He was happier than he had been in a very long time. Jubilant. I don't think I said that correctly. Ecstatic. Triumphant. A wonderful, wonderful thing had happened. Harry. Harry. Someone had hit him around the face. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, that's not that funny. The insane laughter was punctuated with a cry of pain. The happiness was draining out of him, but the laughter continued. He opened his eyes as he did. As he did so, he became aware that the wild laughter was coming out of his own mouth. The moment he realized this, it died away. Harry lay panting on the floor, staring up at the ceiling, the scar on his forehead throbbing horribly. Rond was bending over him, looking very worried. Um... Um, so Ron is like super worried, obviously, cause he like walks in on Harry, like having this like attack basically or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I will, I will say this, I had to ask Tiffany, I was like talking about this last night, um, with our friends and I was like, yeah, I shouldn't be allowed to be on this podcast cause they literally couldn't remember why Voldemort was so happy. <laughs> um, cause Bellatrix is out, <laughs> but like, they all got out of prison. I was like, ooh, because I, I asked Tiffany, I go, so, like, can you can you tell me why? They're like, he's so happy. She's like, do you really want me to? I go, yeah. I'm like, because I genuinely don't Sarah, remember. Sarah, I don't remember either. <laughs> don't be hard on yourself. Thank you for telling <laughs> so me. So I, like, Googled it. Like, why is... So this is... I Googled it, and I'm like, why is he so happy? And it took me to a Quora chat from 2004. <laughs> so they were, like, speculating oh on, like, God. the next book. And I was like, well, this doesn't help me because I know what happens. Because they're like, is Snape a good guy? Is he bad? We don't know. And I was like... <laughs> Oh, I know. do. I know. I'm from the future. I'm from the future. You should have written on there. You should have made an account and been like, I am from the future. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah. So Ron is worried about Harry and he kind of asks him what happened. But Harry himself like really isn't sure. He just knows that you know who, which I think this is like one of the very first times that like, um, oh no, he, hold on. Does he say his name? He doesn't. Ron says it. Um, so he's Voldemort's very happy, like really super duper, very much so happy. Uh, something good happened. Something that Voldemort has been hoping for has happened. Um, and then, then I wrote something that I won't say, but the dude's happy. <laughs> Real happy. Uh, bad guys got to win tonight. <laughs> Um, so any hoosies. So like Harry even is thinking like, he's not even sure like where these words are coming from. Um, it's basically like as if a stranger is speaking for him, but he knew what he was saying is true. Um, he even comments that like the words came just as they had back in the Gryffindor changing room as though a stranger was speaking them through Harry's mouth. Um, but he was like trying not to like poor Ron. He's trying not to vomit all over Ron, but Ron is just telling him like, Oh, well, Hermione wanted me to come check on you because she says, and this is a quote from the book says your defenses will be low at the moment after Snape's been fiddling around in your mind. Um, which is like true. Like that's gotta be, yeah. I love that Hermione knows I, I that imagine though, it. and is like on top of it and is like the ready to like help take care of him. Well, you know, she you read know. some books yeah. about it. I imagine it's like, like having like a migraine. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Like mm-hmm. of, um, like I, I get them every once in a while, but like nothing, nothing, um, knock on wood. It has, I haven't had like a really bad one in a while, but with Harry being like, I just need to go lay down mm-hmm. and like go to sleep. And then like, I'll feel like it's, it blows my mind sometimes where like, I'll, I'll feel like I'm almost dying, like so nauseous. And like, I almost can't even sleep. And then I wake up the next day and I'm like, oh my God, I feel great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> feel amazing. It's like, you know, restarting your computer. Um, so he gets into his bed and he's like, his scar is hurting, his body's hurting. Um, and now he's like thinking that he can't help but think that like the resistance with his mind is probably lower now than before occlumency happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's thinking like, what happened to make Mr. Tom Riddle so happy? Mr. The happiest he has been in 14 years. He's got his girlfriend back. Ooh. He's got his minions back. Ooh. They got um, out. Mm-hmm. And thus ends the chapter. Yeah. This was a doozy. Mm-hmm. I will say, 
I almost like got a little teary eye when they were talking about his um his memories earlier today. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm like poor little Harry. Yeah. He just needs a hug. Yeah. Remember when Molly was the first hug he remembered? Oof. Um, Sad. Yes. Let's test Megan's skills on Discord. Oh, trust me, Vinny stupefied it for me. I mean, wait, stupefied <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> he stunned it. So we are I at the will, lightning bolt round now. Let's be able to let's do see. it. Uh-uh. I have a question. Hey. Can I ask mine first? Take that. What's up, Sarah? Um, if you if you were Harry, I want you to tell me, and nobody can repeat a teacher. Who would you want to teach you acclimacy? Remus. Katie, no, Katie gets to go first. <laughs> what? That's not fair. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no. Remus. It's fair. Now, why? Why would you want him? I want everyone to tell me what teacher and why. I think Harry does very well under his teaching. I think mm-hmm. that, in, especially for, like, say Remus was gifted with occlumency. I think that he would explain it well. I think he would set up Harry for the most success that he could. And he Harry prep him enjoys the connection Remus has to his mm-hmm. family. I right. think, I think well. it would be calming. It's like okay. the respect is just like high. Mm-hmm. So Megan, what's your choice? Because you can't say Remus. It's probably me, McGonagall. I feel like mm-hmm. um, she just would. She like she's stern with her teaching to the point where like mm-hmm. she would be she would do a good job of teaching it to him. But she also has the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like. Like she, she would also be there for Harry with it as well. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, she'd be stern mm-hmm. with it, but she'd also, gosh, what am I, why am I blanking? What is the word I'm? They don't, they don't interact like him and Snape. You know what I mean? Right. Like they yeah. don't. Um, I thought you the... called him Snape. <laughs> I did. <laughs> did you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> she has compassion. That's what I was, the word I was looking Great. for. She has compassion. <laughs> That's amazing. Snake doesn't have compassion. <laughs> I don't know no snakes. Think of how many biscuits he would get to. Oh, he'd he get so down. many biscuits. Oh, yeah. That'd be There'd the best. Be a lot of I hope it like you guys are like you're gonna get chocolate from Remus. You're gonna get biscuits from McGonagall. What <laughs> teacher would you snakes. want to teach Harry? And you can't name those two. McGonagall <laughs> and uh, Remus Lupin. I mean, is my man out of the out of question? Because he... you could pick whomever you want. Well, Dumbly, but it can't be. Why can't it be? Oh, because of like the real story. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) Why are we here? (laughs) So who, if you, if it can't be Dumbledore, who else would you want? And I can't name those two. Correct. (sighs) Friends. Ooh. Yeah, you're welcome. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That would be good. Um, I was thinking maybe Flitwick, but I also think, uh, I think that like, if this was like a year before, he might have done really well with Judy. Because uh, Judy taught him disagree. how to overthrow the Imperius curse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how Moody would be, but Judy I bet probably Moody would, would do right. well, though. I mean, like, yeah, he's intense, but he also isn't. Wait, like, he's intense? Does he not live in a house? Maybe. He's in I book seven. Know. Did you know? Wizard tents are great. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Kingsley. Kingsley. Ooh, Kingsley. He's oh, not a professor, dang. but I'll allow it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can ask the questions now. All right. <laughs> Vinny asks, is the potions potion master's office always in the dungeon? I don't see Slughorn being happy about it. Well, Slughorn does ask for a different office when he comes back, right? Yeah. So I feel like it is meant to be in the dungeon, but maybe it's not like n- required. It's just like, well, this is like your first option, you know, and like who's really going to be like, no, Dumbledore, I don't want that office besides Slughorn, of course, who's like, you know. But like, I wonder if if they have like, so his, all the potions classes are in the dungeons, right? Yeah. All right, right. So like, I wonder if like they just use that for like storage. So like. When he has his office somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I always like just personal headcanon. I always kind of pictured like wherever that teacher's classroom is, like maybe their like dorm or living space would either be like attached or very close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's personally what I've always just thought of. I've also thought that. 
same, same. But I also wonder if they have like their own wing, you know? Yeah. Cause like, I'm sure do you want to be so close to the Like students? I feel like they have like their own little apartment if they wanted to live there. But I also feel like not all the teachers have to live there. Yeah. I don't think I'd want to. Cause like, how would you like have a family? Well, I guess it's really like if you don't and like teaching literally is your life then maybe you'd want to for convenience sake, yeah, you know, yeah. like, like McGonagall throws herself so much into teaching because she, um, you know, she lost her husband. She doesn't have, she doesn't have yeah. family. I feel like mm-hmm. Hogwarts to her is her family. She does though. She's got, she yeah. has like brothers and nephews and stuff. Yeah. But is she going to like live with them? No, yeah. no, no. But like I'm saying, like she does, she does have a family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like you know, Snape. Like, what else does he have to go home to? It seems he like has he no hates family. His house, and he hates. Like you know, like I feel yeah, like he's I feel most like his house was left to him. Yeah, you know, and he doesn't have anybody else to <laughs> give it to. Oh gosh. But I assume, like you know, you know, like in. <laughs> like for the British royalty and stuff, how like they have like legit apartments within the palace and stuff like that. I kind of envision it like yeah. that for the teachers. If it's like a whole apartment, if they if they wanted access to it, it's there. Well, when I was an RA at um, Toledo, like our, I don't know, I guess like our boss. I can't remember the term for our RA leader person. Um, they had an apartment in the dorm, so the dorms had like built in full size apartments for them to live there yeah. as well so i kind of envision it like that i mm-hmm. mean if you don't want to live there you can just rent it out as an airbnb right oh yeah i would totally <laughs> that's totally would a totally thing do that that's but totally like katie and i whenever we, whenever we would like write fan fiction and stuff together we always like would put that there were like apartments in in hogwarts or like you would just have to walk out right outside the grounds and you could apparate home mm-hmm. or like why would you not like i feel like the I feel like you the, the founders home. probably lived there as well yeah. so like, like i mean i would probably after do, they like, created have, it if i was a hogwarts professor i would probably live in hogsmeade you know what i mean it would be yeah. so much somewhere like super close yeah. i'd want to live yeah. like above the three rooms i'd be awesome. a water beer on my way like i just you know i would want <laughs> my own especially because like i it was for me if home. i was a two, i would still want to have like a family mm-hmm. yeah 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 um okay nope rope asks if occlumency is so important why doesn't snape actually explain to harry how to protect and close his mind there's no coming i wonder if it's hard to describe it probably is and i also just feel like snape Mm -hmm. knows how important it is but he also just like really doesn't want to do this and i feel like his stubbornness is getting in the way of like this important lesson and it's well and I wonder mm-hmm. if like he learned from just doing it. Mm-hmm. So he's thinking like, I, this is how well, I learned. I so like, yeah. why can't you just do it like this? Yeah. You know what I mean, like that understanding a natural ability to, yes. um, it's hard for someone to teach cause it just comes yeah. to them. They didn't have to like work to get there. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes like if you're not like, it's sometimes it's like hard to, again, like Tiffany is saying, like if it's something that comes naturally, you, it's almost hard to explain Mm -hmm. how it works to someone else in a way that they might understand it. We're like, Mm -hmm. well, and after Sirius dies at the end of the book, you know, Harry's yelling at Dumbledore in his office and all of this. And they talk about the occlumency and Snape teaching him. And Dumbledore does admit that it was pretty much a mistake. Yeah. So there is that. No, I don't, I don't want to be near this kid. I don't want to teach this kid anything feeling that yeah. he is having. Yeah. So that's I think probably that also Dumbledore was hoping that both he would soften. I yeah. think well I think both Harry and Snape would like be a bigger person and just get over there. I honestly think thing. that they could have had an okay relationship if they weren't weren't both so stubborn. stubborn. Yeah, it's it's their personality. <laughs> Truthfully. I really uh, do yes. think so. I really do. Yeah. Cuz they're very similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's why they couldn't get along so much. That and James. Continue the questions. Um, next question is from Ginny Weasley. If you could pick another teacher to teach, oh, actually, we just kind of went over this. I'm sorry. To teach occlumency, who would it be? We answered oh, this. Sorry, right I stole your question. That's okay, but thank you mm-hmm. for asking that. Um, Kara Lynn asks, "Do you think Harry would have had more success?" with occlumency if a more supportive figure was in the room not necessarily teaching him but was like there also such as McGonagall who would that have how would that have changed things going forward 
since seeing um i don't think i i think he just would have thrived under someone else teaching him i don't think anybody in the room would have helped. would have changed anything yeah maybe mm-hmm. the tiniest bit because maybe if they snape could have couldn't injected. do his whole snape thing fully if there was another teacher in the room snape might have held back a little bit with how forceful he was and maybe like when harry describes how he feels very uncomfortable having his eyes closed if there's someone else there it's like well someone's watching him so i can relax a little bit that's true yeah um next is from Vinny. why is snape afraid to say voldemort is that guilt from what happened to lily i kind of feel like it's habit Be- i feel like it's had well and that's a habit you don't want to break when you're a follower right of um you want to call him the dark lord because he always calls him like the dark lord all the death right? eaters do i think yeah, and I feel like if that's something that he gets uh, lax with in his life, that's going to make, if like, say if he, like, set it around another Death Eater and they're like, hold on. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And, and I, um, s- sorry. Yeah, I, no, ahead. I just, I feel like it is less questioning if he continues saying the Dark Lord because most people know that he was a Death Eater back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not really odd for him to have said that, whereas it, Mm-hmm. would be it would be more um it would be like bad if it was caught the other way around you know what i mean so like right yeah, kind of like mm-hmm. what you were saying it's not it's not as weird for like harry and the students to hear him call voldemort the dark lord but it would be super mm-hmm. horrible if one of the death eaters heard him say he who must not be named or voldemort you know mm-hmm. yeah no i agree he calls him tommy boy richard oh my god um jenny asks take your head house and pick one memory that you think they would hide i don't know enough about flitwick to Uh, say yeah the time that sprout actually sold tentacular leaves (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) Um, maybe any vulnerable moment for McG. Like I feel like she's going deep, Tiffany. Going deep. Yeah. Just okay. All right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I just want to pop on here and say, fall candles, (laughs) Billy razors. I actually use a Billy razor, and I really like it. Uh. Meg, I feel like I kind of got the cop out answer with this because, like, we know. I know. You know, I mean, we can hide yeah. anything with Voldemort. Memories, <laughs> anything with yeah, Lily. memories with Lily or Voldemort. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I guess if he had to pick one for like importance sake, I would say like him being a spy because it's mm-hmm. it's less yeah. important if someone sees his love for Lily over the fact that he's a spy for Voldemort and Order of the Phoenix. Um. I wonder if Flitwick is just really charming with the ladies. Get it? Because he's the charms professor. Maybe. <laughs> I like Flitwick. I wish that we knew more about him. I think he'd be a really yeah. cool um, character to learn more we about. Choose, we choose him a lot for like certain things because we we just know we like he's we just feel so like kind. we know him. Like so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish we did know him. Yeah. Um. Nope Rope asks, do you think Harry was so afraid of Snape seeing his memories that he could not close his mind? Maybe. Maybe the fear was blocking Mm -hmm. him. I mean, Snape does say, like, rid yourself of emotion, and it seems like fear. Or he's so uncomfortable. It seems like fear and anger are the ones that hurt Harry the most. It says, do you think Harry was so afraid of Snape seeing his memories that he could not close his mind? I don't think that his fear is of Snape seeing his memories. I think his fear is of the fact that he now believes Voldemort can read his mind. I think that's that that he's having fear in that regard, but I think also, like, he just doesn't understand what this whole thing is yeah. and he just wants answers so like i think for him he's just it's frustration he's mad at snape there yes yeah. he's frustrated he and snape don't get along anyway so he just wants answers and no one's giving them to him so he's like how am i supposed to be doing this when you won't even tell me like how to do it what it is yada yada, yada right you know yeah, yeah. um I like this one. No probe asks, do you think a charm is like a sourdough starter? You need to feed it every day to keep it alive. <laughs> like sprinkle it with some pixie dust every day. <laughs> hey, Tinkerbell, come here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I think it probably depends <laughs> on the charm, though, honestly. Good. So, like, talking about the stuff that, like, Fred and George make, like, maybe they do need to, like, refresh the ones that they haven't sold or something mm. every so often. Yeah. Like, every I morning. Like they yeah. go but I also and wonder, recharm everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, was it Martismo that said, like, <laughs> every person ability and different with like it's different with charms and stuff so like i if if you truly are like a powerful wizard or witch or whatever um that this the charm is going to last longer so like with fred and george in my mind and like head canon like they're very like smart gifted powerful people so like their their charms last a long time because they are talented you know uh let's think of other questions i'm trying to think because this is like a loaded this is like a baked potato of a chapter a loaded baked potato it was it really was and i feel like i can't believe that there was a whole other half to this chapter you know what i mean right yeah we started this chapter at grimald place yeah 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 crazy yeah because that's whenever snape is there with sirius Mm -hmm. telling him about it they almost throw down yeah throw down Meet me in the kitchen. It's going down. I'll meet anybody in the kitchen. Let's make some snacks. <laughs> Katie, let's go to the kitchen. <laughs> you gotta do that puff pastry. Uh, mm-hmm. Waiting on something to come in. I don't. Me, hopefully, I don't think I have any more questions. What's on the loaded baked potato? Ooh, 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 ooh. Cheese. Shepherd's butter. pie. Oh, I don't need cheese potato. on my baked potato. Chives. We're talking. She has the loaded one. I know. If I'm loading up my baked potato, I would do butter, like salt, broccoli. pepper, sour cream, chives. You could put bacon, but not fake bacon. It needs to be like actual, like cooked, chunked bacon. You know, like bacon. Yeah, I don't like that. Not like bacon. shaking bacon stuff or whatever. Shake it, bacon. Um, Ooh, are you aching? Yep, yep, yep. Or some bacon. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Did I say butter? Thing. Yep. Gotta yep. have butter and sour cream. You could See, do I don't know if I've ever done sour. that with oh. a baked potato. I want to try that. <laughs> what? Butter and sour cream. Oh yeah. I've never done that. You have to have you have to have butter. I'm sorry, what? I've never put butter and sour cream on a baked potato at the same time. What in the world? <laughs> That's literally what they come with at a restaurant. But for but like I haven't ordered baked potatoes from a restaurant in a super super I'm, long time. I don't think I've so when I used cute. to, I would only get butter. Nothing else. Wow. Just butter. Just butter. Whoa. Well, you gotta put salt. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> um, salt, pepper. You can even put garlic salt. That would be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm. You think about like onions, I like got- sauteed onions would be great on a baked potato. I got truffle salt from the grocery store the other day, and I cannot wait to sprinkle some of that on a baked potato. Yeah. I'm fancy. Truffle salt. It was in the clearance I section. learned recently <laughs> that truffle oil is actually synthetic. And that is it? You, like, yes. Um, and that truffle salt, you want act to see actual chunks or, like, bits I, of, like, the su- truffle in the salt. I do and see that it in better, mine, Which is good. Um do you I was see like, wow, it, mind Mr. Blowing. Oh, <laughs> truffle salt on popcorn. Actually, it does. What's the best way to eat potatoes? It. Always. What's your favorite way to eat a potato? What's your favorite way for potato? Marty's mashed potatoes. Ooh, mashed or like um, breakfast potatoes. Any way they come. Fries. Ooh. Oh man, fries. Really good fries. <laughs> fair. Man, fair. all the ways. I like good. Potatoes I, are I delicious. I like a good um, like. Like kind of like a home fry, like chunked potatoes. Like you could saute them in a pan or roast them in the oven. Like redskins. Oh yes. My God. Roasted redskins. Yeah, roasted redskins are so good. Or smashed oil, in the oven. Pepper. Look at the cat Tato. Remember? Remember Harry Tato? Harry Tato. <laughs> I never got him. I've never gotten what? Harry Tato. You start the now saga. To, we now to have the yeah, it's yeah. the Katie saga of the Tato. Go do it, Harry Katie. Tato. How many times did you get it, Megan? Once. Once. Is it still Twice. like it's still an is option that, on oh, there? Yeah. All right, I will I think try. So. That it is. is my my goal. Ooh, that's the, that's should. the switch. It has to be on Swish stories, though. Yeah, do it on Swish oh, stories. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll see if I can get it again. I got it like five times, I think. Let's move on to the fan story. Yes. All right, Kate. all right, fan story. Okay, let's go. <laughs> This week's fan story comes from Tracy Karpinski. Woohoo! Also, your last name makes me think of Pesky Pisky Pesternomi, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Hi, ladies. My name is Tracy Karpinski. 
And since I'm now caught up on the podcast as of the end of Hot Cup of Fire, I figured I'd share my Potter story. I'll start out with my Potter profile. I'm a proud Hufflepuff. Yes. My wand is laurel wood with a unicorn hair, 12 and a quarter inches and unyielding flexibility. And my Patronus is a black mare. My Potter story is more of memories I have while reading or experiencing Harry Potter. Even though I grew up with the books, I don't remember reading them for the first time, but I do remember waiting for books or movies to come out at midnight. One of the memories I always go back to when I think of Harry Potter is reading Deathly Hollows. My grandparents have a lake house in upstate New York, and during the summer, we always went up for two weeks when my mom's company was shut down. The year Deathly Hollows came out, we bought the book and I started reading it on the drive. My cousin was also a big Harry Potter fan, and she came up maybe the day after us. We spent two entire days reading Deathly Hollows, and I will never forget when she caught up to me and then passed me while reading. She would get up to a part and have this emotional reaction, and I would just start trying to read faster and faster. Sounds like me and Meg reading at the same time. Hmm. We stayed up late into the night and read almost all day on the beach. After I had finished the book, we talked about it for hours, and I remember us trying to make a list of everyone who had died. That was rough. Another fond memory I have is getting to visit the Wizarding World of Harry Potter for the first time. It was after Diagon Alley had been opened, and they were letting visitors in early just to see it before the park actually opened. I went with my mom and grandma. I remember trying to walk with them to the back of the park, but I was so excited that they told me to go ahead and they would catch up. I will never forget the feeling walking into Dagon Alley. I was so happy and tears sprang into my eyes. The magic is so real. This trip was also special because it was the last trip I got to take with my mom. She passed away a year after this trip from breast cancer. We had talked about going to Wizarding World since it opened and it was everything I could have asked for. Your podcast has made me look deeper into Harry Potter than I ever thought possible and I appreciate it so much. As you always say, these books have so many lessons in them, and they span all generations. Thank you, ladies, for what you do. With love from a proud puff. Tracy, I love that. Love it. I also, um, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about your mom, and I'm super glad you guys got to share that together. Mm -hmm. That sounds super special. And reading Potter on the Beach? I need to do that. I know, I want to do that. (laughs) Yeah. Like Katie said, we're we're super sorry about the the loss of your mother, but I love that you have these memories to hold on to. Yeah. That's great. Well, and it's fitting that this is going to come out in October, and it's Breast Cancer it Awareness mm-hmm. Month. Indeed, so. yes, indeed. <sighs> okay, tell me something funny. Okay. So thank you, Tracy, for your story. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened when a witch won the lottery? Mm. She went nuts. Ah, <laughs> canuts. Yes, canuts. Katie, canuts. 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 You're welcome. Social media. Ooh, 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 ooh. Megan's not listening. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so you can find us on social media on Facebook at Swish and Flick Podcast and on Twitter and Instagram at Swish Flick Cast. You can follow your hosts, myself and Katie, are on Twitter and Instagram at The Petrus Family, and Tiffany is on Twitter and Instagram at Tiff Swish Flick. Sarah, you can find on Instagram at O'Malley with three H's. Um, also, make sure that you go and follow us on Spotify. Woo! <laughs> and make sure that you follow the podcast on our show page. But you can also follow our user profile for playlists. Um, if you love this podcast and want to support us, you can be a part of it on Patreon. You can head on over to patreon.com forward slash swish flick cast and choose your support level. We have all kinds of different offerings that range anywhere from $2 a month up to $25 a month. And each of those levels gets you different things. Mm-hmm. Patreon's cool and we appreciate All right. It's house, everything our house cup do. time. House Cup time. It was who won? It was Hufflepuff, who won? wasn't it? Who <gasps> won? No, it was Slytherin. Oh my god, it was so close. It was very close. We even won oh. bingo. Gosh darn it. Every day I'm oh, Slytherin. I tried, guys. <laughs> Who's surprised? Not us. Just we tried, man. Listen. We tried. I'm just saying. <laughs> You know, come in. Where's the Tiffany Dumbledore? <laughs> Wait, can, give Gryffindor can we all be the like points? randomly awarded for having the best snack during the pod, and then get fifty points, and then. <sighs> it's 
it's okay. We won last no, time. It's all right. There's nothing. Right. Right. I mean, if you, you look, if you look <laughs> in the trophy room, yes, there's a good division of. I mean, oh know. sure, real good division. Okay, Slytherin but it doesn't say cups. Slytherin has won fifteen. It will one day, and everyone else will be like, two. everybody is tied in second with three, and Slytherin has six. Right? So I'm saying. that's so bogus. I can't. Even I mean, stand it. I think it's all a bunch of crock. So <laughs> crock full of not good French onion soup. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> no, it's probably like water and onions. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even cooked. Oh, uh, raw. <laughs> Get that snake off my body. <laughs> Not my Here's body. The thing. When the head pupil is the head pupil, there's no cheating involved. You just have to like comments. You know what? And though? it is up to you how you like those comments. That's the fun of it. Shout out to Slytherin. Whatever. There was two Slytherins in the chat. I worked hard. So <laughs> I worked hard you know, for hard my points. work. I rewarded. pay attention. <laughs> unlike my fellow podcasters. Listen, the only time I didn't pay attention was when I was about to start social media, okay? <laughs> Okay. Well, let's talk about the fact that I think I got Harry Tato literally five yeah, times no and you only fair. got it once. Never so it. I'm better. <laughs> Whatever. There it is. These cheating snakes. <laughs> Look at the baguettes. Le <laughs> <laughs> <Les> baguette. <laughs> oh my God. That is they, great. they all are cheating snakes. You are not a kitten. Okay. What have we been doing lately? <laughs> Do you tell us what you've been to, Tiffany? I've been teaching online. That's all I'll say. I've been lifting. I've been playing um, Super Mario 64 on Switch because that, um, the Super Mario All-Stars bundle came out, oh, so I got that. So, so it's been very I nostalgic and very fun. I think I might start Odyssey today. Yeah. Yeah. The Animal Crossing um Halloween update is coming Ooh, soon. Yes. So I'm excited about that. And then <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, friends. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> Okay, but like we need to figure, like, great. should we like gradually just put these on our story? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we, we gotta share them. Oh my we gotta God. share them. There's tears in my eyes. Can you guys? Oh, I I have a request. So for the people who create um the memes and stuff, can you make sure that you edit in your handle or something so we can give you credit oh, as well? Oh, good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put yeah, because in Tiffany, the, in the you tagged you the wrong Vinny. <laughs> on Twitter and Vinny was like of oh. course that's the time that uh, Chris Rankin notices and it's not my tag <laughs> oh. well oh, there's Fozzie Bear woof woof dude um Marty <laughs> Marty come get your dog Marty I mean, we could have gotten up from our chairs to open the door so we could let yeah, them out. Yeah, but then I'd have to, like, take my headphones off. Boom. Can, can yeah. you, okay. <laughs> to but we didn't do it. God, and then someone's, like, <laughs> calling me. What is this? Spam? No, thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So just, you know, decorating for fall and getting excited for Halloween and all that stuff. That's what I'm doing. That's it. Done. Done. Next. Um, I really am looking forward to reading today. I'm about to start the book, The Unhoneymooners. Thanks to my little book exchange I did on Instagram. This book was sent to me and it looks right up my alley. So I'm super excited. How fun is it to just like get books in the mail? Dude, it it's was not even best. for me and I'm loving it. It was the best thing ever. It was so fun. And let me tell you. So funny because so it's like a chain reaction, right? This like book exchange thing. So I, I posted that I was into it because my friend Regine posted about it. So like how the chain reaction works is that like anybody who responds to me that says that they're in, I send them Regine's information to send a book. 
girl got like 20 books from this book exchange yeah (laughs) she got so many books she's like in heaven so shout out to anybody that reached out to me on instagram to join it because she's very happy camper with all the books that you guys sent her um and she loves it so i'm about to start reading the honeymooners um i too want to start mario odyssey because we've had it for forever and we haven't touched it which i don't really even know why nope I was wondering what you guys were talking about. I'm like, I don't know what this Odyssey thing is. <laughs> it's a me. A it's Mario. like not even the new Mario game, is but it it's like the new ish <laughs> regular RPG Mario game, I think, for a system. It's like the one that came out with the Switch. And it we came with it. our original yes. Switch that we've had for like it's, two years. You're Quite saying words that are really confusing. Just don't even, Sasa. don't, don't, don't. Accept it. So, um, <laughs> what else am I up to? We have been really on top of editing vlogs so plugging here for not only swish but also the petrus family go and follow both of the channels on youtube because we have a new schedule that is about to happen once we're totally caught up i'm so excited so the schedule is going to be monday is going to be a petrus family disney vlog every week Tuesday is going to be a universal Petrus family vlog every week. Wednesday is nothing. You get nothing. <laughs> Thursday. Wednesday's good day, sir. Thursday is going to be a swish and flick day. vlog. And whether it's <laughs> Tiffany and Sarah or myself and Katie, it's going to like alternate. There's no real like rhyme or reason for that. It's just about like what we have recorded. And then Friday oh is going to be like a Petrus family home vlog. So I'm super excited. Nice. To be caught up. And to be making content, and it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. So cool, Katie. Mm-hmm. Kate. Oh, we don't have anything on Wednesday because we record friends watching friends. Right. That's why. That's why. Busy bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I doing? Oh, I just finished my fifth week of my workout plan. Pretty stoked about it. I did push-ups You're today so without dying. It was awesome. I think mm-hmm. that I will always die doing push-ups, I and I hate I would them too. But I did and I, them. I decided to say never again. You and I need to break up permanently. <laughs> <laughs> You're never getting back together. Um, yeah. Just what else am I doing, Meg? I don't know. Living life. Yep. We've just been kind of like busy bees lately. I don't know. Yeah. Just trying to get content in order, and I'm excited to show everybody. So. Get ready for cool. it. Katie, how do you feel as a 30-year-old when this episode comes out? Um, I'm going to try and channel my future self. Uh, I feel pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming I'll feel the same. Um, 30, flirty, and thriving. Oh, hopefully you're not flirting with other people than your wife. Nah. Well, I don't know. You do nah. you. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you what to do. No, nah, just, <laughs> just my wife. And food. I will say I felt old when I turned 30 because I'm pretty sure that I hurt myself sleeping. Like I woke up one day and my knee was hurting. I was like, is this what 30 is? <laughs> I know. I'm waiting for that. So everyone has said. <laughs> uh, or, or do we want to talk about me yeah. and how awesome I am? I would love to talk <laughs> about you. Um, I'm doing nothing. School, work. <sighs> That's pretty much it. Working out. I don't know how many miles I've biked by the time this comes out. Um, hopefully I'm like, I will by this time, hopefully be over 300 miles. I'm at 240, I think mm. currently. Oh, so I can easily do that in two weeks. I forgot my story that I was telling you when you, we sat down. Go ahead. What you, story? Um, oh yeah. Tell it. And then I'll finish my section. So I'm, I'm, it's cute. I've been lifting, uh, I think it's been three weeks now because i i changed programs and i'm loving it so i finally felt strong enough to pick up my 25 pound dumbbells today and so we're halfway through the workout and i look at look at the next move and i'm like i think i'm ready for my 25 so i tell katie and carrie i'm like i think i'm ready to pick up these 25s and then if you remember the story from uh christmas time i believe I asked for 25 pound dumbbells for Christmas from my parents and my grandfather had passed away and he was an avid, um, power lifter. And so I 
got his mismatched, just beat to heck 25 pound dumbbells. And I picked them up and I was like, this is the first time I'm using my grandfather's dumbbells. And then I realized today is it has been a year since he passed away. And I just thought that that was kind of wild because like I picked him up and I was like, oh my gosh, it's today. Yeah. Like he's with you. It's a year. Yeah. So it's, I cried a little and it was, um, emotion, but I did it and I successfully did it and I did one more rep for him and yeah. So I just thought that that was really cool. So I'm back to my 25s. I'm stronger and my grandpa's with me. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back to you. Um, things I want to remind people. Register. Well, I don't know if you go vote. Voting is important. Be nice to people. Um, there was something I actually wanted to say and I don't remember what it was. But uh, yeah. Be kind. Rewind. Every week, check your voter registration. Make sure you're still registered. They can purge you. Just check every week. Please and thank you. Um, that's my PSA. Shoot. What was I going to say? I don't. Oh, mm-hmm. um, if there's something like Megan and Katie are going to do like, well, Katie, puff pastry stuff. But if there's something you want Tiffany and I like to make. So we did um, frozen and cold butter beer. Um, and next we're going to do hot. It won't be to the end of October just because I don't have time. Because um, my next free weekend is October like 24th or whatever that weekend is. Yeah. So we'll do it then. Um but even if it's not like Harry Potter related, if you just want us to like, I think we're gonna open up the Harry, unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. Yeah. I really want to make steak and kidney pie. See about that. Um, so I think that we're gonna do that for the Swish party um, and make everyone eat that. Yep. <laughs> You're all getting steak and kidney pies. Pumpkin carving vlog. That's good. We should Ooh, pick like a Harry. No, Potter you want to know why? Here's the thing. Marty and I can. Do I it. can't. I can't carve a normal pumpkin. Tiffany is like some master class and has Katie like and designs oh, and stuff. Too, Tiff. If you like do and it from I afar, we can literally like tag team can. a pumpkin carving video. Ours will last for like a day yeah, in the heat, but it'll that. be fun while I look at it in the house and the air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll um I'll pick a it's it'll it'll be simple. Maybe I'll I'll have Marty help me. Marty helps me with the big knives because I'm not allowed. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I just don't feel comfortable with it. Uh, but yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll do some fun stuff. And- uh, don't forget to go download Spotify. It's free. That's where we're going to be from now on. And um, we're really excited about it. It is good for us as your hosts. And what is good for us in turn is good for our listeners. So we would we not appreciate make this you. decision without thinking it was the correct one for everybody. For sure. So, yeah. Absolutely. It we're super excited about it. Took us we a love long time. Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. like, and I know I, I love like li- just even listening to music on that app. So listen to our fun playlist. We're going to hopefully have made by the time this comes out. Absolutely. Which, allegedly we are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have ideas for like other playlists, yeah. so Send we're going to do one Gryffindor of each house. We're going to do our ideas. own stuff. <laughs> and then, um, I'll do if you have o- other ideas. Let us know. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right. That concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the muggles get you down. <gasps> Amazing! Jump in my voice! <laughs>